Good morning and welcome. Okay, so we're going to start sitting in the center of our mat, the palms of the hands facing up, just arriving on your mat, this sacred space for the next hour where we can be totally whole once more. Bring back any fragments of yourself that you might have lost during the week. Let's bring ourselves back to wholeness. Let's think about our posture. We're rooting down with our sitting bones, connecting to the earth beneath our bodies. Imagine strong roots coming out of your sitting bones. Visualizing those roots really sturdy and strong, anchoring you down into the earth where you can feel supported and grounded. Visualizing those beautiful roots going deep into the core of the earth. And let's take that energy from the core of the earth and bring it up into our body, through our central column, through our head, and then lifting us up, back up to source. And then we can visualize a big golden cord lifting us up and pl plugging us back into source. We feel very balanced. Allow the shoulders to melt away from your ears. Retract the chin a little bit so your ears sit directly above your shoulders. And take your hands into Chin Mudra where you place the index fingers and the thumbs lightly turned together. And close your eyes. Allow the energy that we've created to come up through your energy centers up to the crown of the head and then like a vortex take it round again so that energy is spiraling up and around your body clearing away any debris anything that you don't need just allow it to dissipate into the ether and start to focus on the slow rhythm of your breathing Sense the breath as it enters both nostrils. A long, smooth, even inhalation. Feel the chest rising and the belly swelling. And then sense the breath as it leaves the body out of both nostrils. Long, smooth and even. Focusing on your breath, breathing in peace and breathing out hope. Breathing in gratitude and breathing out love. Breathing in light and breathing out light and allow that light to go wherever it is needed in the world. Raising our vibration through the power of togetherness, knowing that we are not separated and separation is an illusion. Uniting the light, bringing us together sensing the light that passes from heart to heart. Together in unity. And as we move through our yoga postures this morning, taking that sense of unity, peacefulness, calm, love, gratitude, taking all those high, va high vibrational emotions with us on our journey. Bring your hands to your heart center into Anjali Mudra. Just nestle your thumbs on your breastbone. Let's do some protection breath. So we're going to breathe in and then as we go out, creating a bubble of protection. So breathe 
breathing in as the arms go up and breathing out as the arms go down. Linking the breath to the movement. Synchronizing. And when you focus on linking the breath to the movement, this helps to anchor you into the present moment. This is meditation in motion. Meditation is single pointed concentration. The focus on not concentrate. Creating that bubble of nourishment. Breathing in and then this time we're going to take the arms up, interlace the fingers, side body long, reaching up, growing tall. Inhale. And as you exhale, take the left arm over and then the right hand just nestles into the mat, equally weighting your sitting bones without stretching your waist. Just allow it to happen organically without forcing it. Relax your right shoulder. Inhale, come up. Take the right arm over, exhale. Make sure this right hip's rooted. Do you feel balanced on right and left side? Coming up on an inhale, your right hand's gonna hold on to your left knee. So right hand, left knee, and just do a, an easy twist. And as you do this, ringing out all the things you don't need. Relax your shoulders, lift the chest. Inhale, exhale, swapping sides. Take the left hand, hold on to the right knee. Inhale to grow tall, exhale to twist. Allow the vibration of the music to wash over you and through you, bringing out anything you don't need. Inhale and then release, gently place your hands onto your knees as we transition into the seated cow and cat. So the cow we up towards the ceiling, we open our chest, don't force the head back, and on the exhalation of the cat, we round out our back, allow the shoulder blades to melt apart. So inhale into the cow, and exhale into the cat. Moving at a speed that feels right for you, not rushing, or racing, taking that peace and stillness with us as we move our body, releasing the spine. One more time forwards, last time backwards, and then we're going to go into the Sufi climb, which is the same thing with the circles. Was in the leg to the right, backwards, and over to the left. Now you're circling. You'll keep the breath the same. Inhale forwards, exhale back. And then reverse, go back. First, that's right. Nice and smooth. As if you were drawing a beautiful circle. No beginning and no end. Remembering time is an illusion. Let's make the next one the last one. And then come to the center. 
breath in, sigh out, twice more breathing in, sigh out, one more time breathing in, sigh, beautiful, take your legs out in front, and let's do a shake and a flick of the fingers, shaking your legs, shaking your chest, just shaking your body, it's very therapeutic to shake. Let everything go by vibrating those molecules in our body, shaking every way, everything away we don't need, and then raising the vibration of that DNA. And then just doing it relax. And as you do that, bring the soles of the feet together. Let's work on the ability of our hips as we transition into the cobbler, Vadakanasana. So you can either hold on to your ankles, the inner arches with your toes, find find a sit bones, make any micro adjustments so you feel comfortable, and let's move our legs. So we're gonna inhale, take the knees up, and we're gonna exhale, take the knees down. The inhale, take the knees up, and exhale, take the knees down. Try and link the breath to the movement. Moving intuitively, so move at a speed that feels right for you. You're moving to the rhythm of your own drop. Nobody else is. Find length in the spine. Hold that one more time. Inhale up. Exhale down. hold on to our right leg and we're going to cradle our leg it's called rocking the babies take your left arm under cradle your right knee and use the, the arms against that leg to, as a leverage to lengthen the spine the spine's really long and then just start to rock your baby rocking your inner child giving yourself a little bit of self-nourishment Remember not to be hard on yourself. None of us are completely perfect. We're on the same journey. It's really important to embrace where you are on that journey. We're all parts of that jigsaw puzzle. We will make up the whole. And then just gently taking that baby around. So you're taking your right leg around, your right leg matching your left leg, hold on to your right foot and then draw your heel towards your bottom and you're stretching through the hip flex and the quadricep and you're squeezed shoulder blades together. It's like an active stretch. You want to cheek and place your forearm down so I'll let you decide. Forearm or hand. Bring that right knee back. Shift your hips forwards. Together as we transition into the clam. So you've got your hand on your hip. So you can either be here, your forearm on the mat, or as an easier alternative, you can lay down and place your head on your bicep. So have your heels in line with your bottom. We're going to inhale to lift that top knee away from the bottom knee, and then exhale to close. Put your hand on the rim of your pelvis. Have a little connection to the core now by pulling up the pelvic floor, Mulla Bandha. Draw your belly button in, Uddiyana Bandha. Just about 30% just to recruit those core muscles. The pelvic floor. And when you pull your belly button in, you activate the TVA, the transverse abdominals, which actually wraps around your waist like a girdle or a corset. And it's good to have a really strong core. It keeps us injury free, hopefully. So inhale up, exhale down. One more time. Back 
to the front with the soles of the feet together again. Place the hands on your ankles, your inner arches, or wrap the fingers around your toes by interlacing the fingers. Use that as a leverage to lengthen the spine. Inhale to take the knees up and exhale, let it go. If you feel like you want to sigh at all, depending on what your weeks feel like, you might feel you're really in need of a big sigh. And sighing is very, very keen thing. further every time. And we're going to hold this one, so holding it, having an asana, visualize a thread, a golden thread on your heart this time, coaxing your heart forwards, drawing you forwards. Lengthen the spine and relax the shoulders. Close your eyes if you want to. Allow your hips to open and surrender. baby on our left leg. Take the right arm, the right hand underneath your left foot and your left hand under your chin and knee and cradle. Use that as a leverage to the length of the spine. But it's an elevated, proud feeling as you rock your baby. left leg, mirror the right leg, both knees going that way, hold on to your foot, ankle, draw your knee back, squeeze your shoulder blades together, open and expand your heart and your chest, beyond the forearm as a, as a modification. That little connection to your bandas, so pulling up and pulling in just the flavour of those bandas. Inhale and then coming down onto your forearm with your legs bent, knees stacked, feet stacked, heels in line with your bottom, hand on the rim of your pelvis. You can lay down as a modification with your ear on your bicep. Otherwise, you imagine an inflated balloon underneath your waist, drawing your waist away from the floor, and then just inhale to lift the top knee away from the bottom knee, and exhale to close. Enjoy the resonance of the music. Connecting to sound. Sound so important. What we listen to is really important. That includes our internal dialogue, what we say to ourselves, to others. Everything has a vibration. That connection to the core, inhale up. Exhale down, two more. Make the next on the last one. Well done. Enjoy that little rest. Well done, everybody. So we're gonna come on to all fours, four point kneelers. You're gonna turn around, your head will be to the right side. You're in four point kneeling with the wrists under the shoulders and the knees underneath the hips. Try and visualize, if you can, a small pool of water 
resting in the base of your spine. So your neutral pelvis and neutral spine. Connect to the core, pulling up and pulling in. Anabanda, Uddiyana Banda. Just to flavor, so not 100%, as they get quite tired quite quickly. We're going to start by mobilizing this right hip. We're going to be isolating our right hip. Try and stay really still with the other parts of your body. So you're going to breathe in. As you breathe out, just lift the right knee, a whisper there, and the right chin and the right foot off the, the mat. And then start to circle, going out and in with your right knee. You're going to circle on the mat. Now you can start, if you want to make it harder, you can start to make it bigger by extending the leg. So you let it go out. You still draw in the circle. You extend the leg behind. And then take it back in the opposite direction. So you'll come in towards the midline of the body first. Go in, out, extend it out. Try not to fall on the left leg. As you get tired, try not to fall on the left leg. We're trying to isolate. The temperature of your body now will be increasing. Make the next one the last one. Extend the leg out and hold it. And now flex your foot. Don't lift the leg too high. Okay, inhale. And on the next exhalation, take out your left arm. So now you've got your right leg and left arm. Palm of the left hand facing inwards. Try not to sink in your back, or sag. Inhale, exhale, take the left hand down, point the toes on your right foot, inhale, and as you exhale, as gracefully as you can, draw your right leg forwards. Check that your right knee is directly above your right ankle. Take the left knee back a little bit, allow the hips to sink down towards the mat. Left hand beside your right foot, on the next inhalation, you're turning right and reaching up with your right arm. Turning right, reaching up with the right arm. Have the right hand directly above your right shoulder. Spread your fingertips on that right hand. If you want to make it harder, tuck your toes and lift the left leg off the Inhale, exhale, lower. Take your right leg back, gracefully. Wrists under shoulders, knees under hips. Well done, I'm just gonna do something in the middle. So I want you to take your hips to the right. As your hips go to the right, I want you to look over to your left. And then take your hips to the left and look over to the right. Inhale through the center. And then exhale as your hips go one way and the head goes in the opposite direction. Inhale through the center, exhale, twist. Well done, let's do one more right, one more left. So hips to the right, head to the left. Hips to the left, head to the right, the last one. Well done. Come to the centre. Breathe as it neutral pelvis. Allow the back of the neck to be long. We'll start by circling our left hips. We're going to breathe in. As you breathe out, lift up the left knee, left shin, left foot. And start to draw that circle. You can start very slow. Breathing in and breathing out in your own time. Then start to extend that leg if you want to make it harder. Only if you want that extra challenge. Extend that leg behind. Try not to fall on the right leg. Exhale. 
And next time you come forwards, let's reverse it. So it'll be into the midline of the body first, extend the leg, take the leg out to the left side. So keep pulling up and pulling in. We're releasing synovial fluid into that left hip socket, which is like liquid gold for the body and the hip. And then hold the leg out, flex that left foot, draw the shoulders away from your ears. Well done. Breathing in. And as you exhale on the exhalation, take your right arm out. You've got left leg, right arm. And then try and stabilize the shoulder blades on your back, spreading the shoulder blades out. Keep breathing. Stay strong and focused. Inhale, exhale, take the right arm down, point the toes on your left foot, breathing in, and exhale, draw that left leg gracefully forwards. If you're sure that your left knee is directly under you, oh, sorry, directly above your left ankle. Allow your hips to sink. Well done. Right hand next to your left foot. On the next inhalation, you're going to turn left, turning left and reaching up with your left arm. Spread the fingertips on that left hand. Once to make it harder, tuck your toes on your right foot and lift your right knee off the mat. lifted take your left leg behind I want you to sit backwards backwards on your bottom on your heels this is uncomfortable you can sit with your legs crossed if you've got knee issues place a cushion underneath your bottom if you've got a knee issue let's just release our wrist so take your arms forwards Extend the hands as if you were pre pressing your hands against the brick wall. So fingertips up, stretching the wrists. Fingertips down towards the floor. Fingertips out. Fingertips in. And then rotate your wrists one way. Take them back in the opposite direction. Last one, well done. Inhale, and then as you exhale, bring your arms down, back into full point kneeling with the knees underneath the hips. Have your hands a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. We're going to do downward facing dog. If your hands are too close together, when you go up into downward facing dog, you create a little bit of restriction about around your neck and your upper back. So I like to have hands a little bit wider for downward facing dog, but just whatever feels right for you. There's no right or wrong as long as it's safe. You're going to tuck your toes as we prepare for downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Shivasana. So we're going to breathe in. As we breathe out, come up into downward facing dog. That's it. Lengthen the spine. Push the tailbone towards the ceiling. Invite your armpits towards your thighs. Feel that stretch in your calves, in your Achilles tendons. Feet are not touching the floor. If your feet are touching the floor, then your feet probably need to be a bit further away from your hands. The downward facing dog removes fatigue, rejuvenates the body bring you extra blood to our brain. But it's very therapeutic to be upside down sometimes, seeing everything from a different perspective. Now let's walk our dog. So bending the right leg, allow the left heel to come down. Swap, bending the left leg, allow the right heel to come down. 
Continue to walk your love. Making the next on the last one. Hold it here, big breath. And on the exhalation, walk your feet forwards towards the front of your mat. Keep low. And we're going to hang in Uttanasana, which is a deep forward fold. Feet hip width apart, ground the outer edges, lift up your inner arches. Allow the weight of your head to lengthen the spine. You can't touch the floor, that's fine. You can hold on to your elbows. You can place your hands on bricks or blocks. So just visualizing your spine like a waterfall, gently cascading forwards over the rim of your pelvis. And slowly start to come up vertebrae by vertebrae through a curved spine and you visualize you're building a tower of golden bricks coming up to a standing position and then turn to face the front with your feet wide out in second position that's it have a little connection to your core. Try and have your two hip bones vertically above your pubic bone. To draw your tailbone, tuck it under a little bit. Pull up and pull in so everything's strong. We're going to do three little plie pulses and then we're going to open out. So take your hands out in front into prayer. And when we do the little pulses, your knees are going out towards your baby toes. So getting ready, we're going to do one, two, three, and then open. You can look up a little bit. Keep going. One, two, three, and then open. Breathing out. And breathing in. Deep, wide, expansive breath. Ah. Oh. In your own time, don't feel that you have to go at the same speed as me. Three little pauses, and then hold it. In, breathing out and then breathing in. Stretch those fingertips. Squeeze your legs together as you come up. One more time. Hold. Hold, hold, hold. Inhale. Lower the arms and take your feet out. Your feet are going forwards to 45 degree angle. Set. Make sure you sweep your tailbone. Doing neutral pelvis, relax your shoulders. Take your arms up, shoulder height, inhale. Relax your shoulders, exhale. Beautiful. Take your left foot out, 90 degrees. Fantastic. Transitioning into Chukvanasana. So here's the breathing pattern. Inhale to take the palms, the hands to face me. Exhale, go over to the side so you can't go any further. And then inhale, tip. Asana. So you can be high or a little bit lower. Just don't lean forward. You need to keep pulling your right shoulder back. Imagine that your whole of your body is leaning against the, the wall. You can either gaze forwards, if you want to make it more challenging, you can turn to look up to that right hand. Try and keep both legs super straight and super strong. Inhale, 
come up and transition into Virabhadrasana 2. You might have, have your feet a little bit wider. Try and get the thigh parallel to the floor. Hands in line with your shoulders, gazing at the middle finger of that left hand. Try to avoid the knee buckling in, take the knee out towards your baby toe. Round the outer edge of your back right foot, well done. Rooting down into the earth, the soles of the feet. Relax your shoulders and your neck. Inhale and transitioning into the standing side stretch, Parsvakanasana, as you take your right arm over. So you can either be here, your forearm on your thigh, or you can come down with the palm of the hand or the fingertips. Have a nice straight line from your fingertips down to your heel. Try not to lift your hips, try allow the hips to sink. The hips Balancing on the left foot, so gaze on the floor, inhale, have strong positive thoughts as you tip over into your half moon balance. Flexing that right foot, balancing on the sole of your left foot. come up and transition into those three plies. So one, two, three, open. So have your hands just below your shoulders. When you take your arms out, as if you were taking flight, all of your heart areas open. And just enjoy the movement. Exhale. Inhale. Stretching out your magnificent self. Divinely created. Let's make the next one the last one. Oh, hold it. Plug in. Raise your vibration. Become aware of all there is. Merging with the oneness. Inhale. And lower the arms. Take your feet out, round the outer edges of your feet, lift up the inner arches. Three feet going forward, relax the shoulders. Inhale, arms to shoulder height. Exhale, relax the shoulders. Take the right foot out 90 degrees, put the right foot 45. Use a breathing pattern. Inhale, take the palms of the hands to face me. Exhale. Right hand goes to the side, you can't go any further, and then inhale, tipping into the triangle. So you can be high, a little bit lower, see where your feet naturally wants to go. Try and keep both legs straight, and your head can be straight ahead. It's a little bit more challenging to strip up towards that left hand. That's challenging your balance as you pull your head up towards that left hand. Inhale, 
Inhale, come up. Nirvagasana two, bending that front leg, taking that butt foot, back foot further apart. Looking towards that front Rendering, letting go, unraveling. Try to sink this hip down. Make it harder for the tips of the palm of the hand. Try to avoid that right knee buckling in. Try and draw it out with about your inner thighs activating the inner thigh muscles. come up and transitioning into the half moon so you're balancing on your right foot coming over balancing try and steady the mind as a steady mind leads to a steady body focusing on your breath Come up to the front of your mat, take the palms and the hands together, and then take your arms out, standing in Tadasana, standing at the front of your mat, show your hands, your hands like this, move down with the soles of the feet, and just enjoying that energy that we've created, allow the energy every cell and every molecule and every atom within your body and feel yourself growing taller allow yourself energetically to stretch out rooting down with the soles of your feet standing with the majestic steadiness of a mountain dangle by your side and we're going to do a very controlled focused roll down as we roll down try to articulate and separate individual vertebrae within your spine and mobilize our spine inhale and then allow your chin exhale allow your chin to touch your chest and then rolling down slowly like a rag doll Heavy. Knees can be a little bit soft. You're going in your own time. And when you get down towards the floor, step back with your right knee, step back with your left knee. So you're going to be in four point kneeling. Wrists under shoulders, knees under hips. Pull the shoulders away from your ears. Seven. Four point kneeling. Take an inhalation. And as you exhale, take your right leg back, tucking your toes, and then take your left foot back, tucking your toes. You're in a plank. Come back, asana. Try not to sink or sag. And then we're going to 
the transition, so you turn around with the dance, which means we go from this plank down towards the floor. If it's too challenging, you just drop to your knees. So inhale, go down in a plank or on your knees, elbows point backwards, go down with control. Fabulous, tuck your toes, and then we're gonna rise up into the cobra. Inhale to lift. Exhale, take your arms out to the side. Inhale, take your hands back under your shoulders, and then exhale, lower. Let's do a few more of those, the flying cobra. Inhale, lift. Exhale, fly your arms out to the side. Take your hands under, and then come down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, fly. Inhale, hands under your shoulders and exhale, lower. Moving in your own time. Allow the hips to sink into the mat. Your feet are hip width apart. Keep the back of the neck long and in line with the spine. Gonna hold our flying cobra so we're gonna come up inhale take the arms out and hold it hold the arms lift in the chest work in the back inhale bring your hands under your shoulders stretch yourself back into extended child's posture actually with you um last the child's posture, take the hands into Kali Mudra. So with Kali Mudra, the index fingers are stretching out forward. Left thumb over right thumb, and your back three fingers are crossed. And then you place your Kali Mudra on the back of your neck, on the mandala of Langata. Kali Mudra, dispelling any darkness, allowing the light in through your fingertips. Visualize light coming from source through your fingertips and through into your mandala of Logata, filling your whole body out with light as if you're blowing up a balloon with light. and tall on your sitting bones. Take your arms out in front. Spine long, relax your shoulders. Inhale, exhale, go back into a soft C shape and hold it there, so working your core. If you want to make it harder, extend your right leg and then take your right leg down. Extend your left leg and then take your left leg down. Breathing out as you lift. Breathing in as you lower. Breathing out as you lift. Breathing in as you lower. You want to make it harder. Both legs up. Both legs down. Pointing your toes. Breathing out as you extend. Inhale to lower. Straighten out the legs, legs and feet, and folding forwards into passion on the last snap. Straight leg forward to forward. Turn the neck, don't force the stretch, bend your knees into the 
lips. Breathing in. As you go. Slowly coming up. Well done. Bend your legs. Take your hands behind your thighs. Breathe in, grow tall. And on the exhalation, rolling down slowly, vertebrae by vertebrae. When you get down to the floor, just hold it there, head down, legs bent. Draw your right knee in, interlace the fingers or lay the hands. Just your right knee. And then extend your left leg along the floor. Left leg can be on the mat or hovering, the whisper there. Inviting that right knee towards your right armpit. your left leg, place the sole of the left foot on the mat, take your right foot on your left knee, move the arms away from the body, take an inhale and as you exhale take the legs over to the right side, you might find that your left shoulder is lifted to so take the weight onto your head, lift the back and then place the back back down so the shoulder blades are equally weighted and turn your head to the left got a knee issue on your left knee, place the right foot down so you can modify and adapt. You're exposing the soles of your feet, resting on the inner arch of your left foot. Place the fingers or lay the hands. Nestle in. Extend the right leg. Right leg can be straight or, I mean, can be on the floor lifted. Either side. Pushing away with the inner heel of that right foot. leg, place the sole of the right foot flat on the mat, left foot on the right knee, arms away from your body, inhale, exhale, take the legs over to the left, adjust the shoulder blades, they equal, turn your head to the right, enjoy that stretch, sense of letting go. chest, knees together, feet together, breathe out, draw the knees in and inhale, just a little release, 
the breathing out, draw the knees in. Inhale, just a little release. Lengthening the lower back. Right over, right over. You're really massaging your back and your hips. Come to the centre, extend the legs, sit arms down by your side, palms facing down. Extend the right leg along the mat. Extend your left leg along the mat. And beautiful yogis, we're going to finish off with some relaxation. So making sure that you feel very comfortable. That's really important, feeling comfortable. So make any little adjustments. You feel balanced and comfortable. Just checking your shoulders here same height so the hips feel equal on both sides have your arms slightly away from the body the palms the hands facing up allow the fingers to curl allow your palms to gently soften Now check in with your feet. Have your feet slightly wider than hip width apart. And then just allow your feet, your knees and your hips to open out. So allowing all the work we've done just to settle into the body. You can breathe in and then breathe out. So giving yourself permission Trying to really still the mind. Remember to change our minds. First, we watch our mind and see what's going on. Become aware. Awareness is very, very important. The breathing in. And as you exhale, blowing away any restless thought. Try and slow down your mind and try not to pay too much attention to your thoughts. But instead, see them floating away like clouds in the sky of your mind. Finding gaps of nothingness within our thoughts. 
places. Finding freedom and liberation from our minds as we really settle in and let go. Having a sense of unraveling, surrender, letting go of everything, just so that you can bathe in the amazing vibration that we've created our yoga practice, creating life force, people prana, allow that pranic energy, that life force to lift you up and as well as lifting you up, bringing itself back to homeostasis and balance. Really, really allowing the whole of your body to seep and sink to the earth beneath your body as if you were being cradled by Mother Earth herself. Special creation, divine being. Light residing on a divine planet, divinely created in every way, remembering your magnificence, feeling your way. Washing over you and through you. And go deeper and deeper and deeper into relaxation. Allow your scalp and facial muscles to become very relaxed. Softening neck, shoulders, collarbones. Relaxing your hips. Allow your hips to sink deep, deep, deep into the floor beneath. Relaxing your feet and your toes. Relaxing your ankles. Relaxing your calf and your shin. Relaxing your knees, front and back. Relaxing your inner thighs and outer thighs. Relaxing your back. Relaxing your tummy. Feeling the gentle swell of the belly as it rises. Relaxing your upper arms, the biceps, the triceps. Relax your elbows. Relax your forearms. 
relaxing your wrists. Relaxing the palms of your hands. Relaxing your fingers. And then each of your fingertips. Relaxing and immersing yourself in that stillness. Very slowly, start to move your body in any way that feels nice. You might want to sway your feet, move your hands, move your head. Maintaining that sense of calm and peacefulness yourself in your bubble of nourishment. Bring your knees into your chest. Bring your knees into your chest. Just to harness all that energy, that prana, and then rock from side to side as you massage your back into the mat. And then lay over to the right side in the fetal position. You might want to use a hand as a little cushion. And then slowly coming up to a comfortable seated position where the spine can be long. So you might want to sit on a cushion. I'm actually sitting on two cushions. What happens is when you sit on a cushion, your hips are higher than your knees and it helps the energy to come up that we've created. Keeping that sense of stillness. Honouring the light that unites us and honouring the light that passes from heart to heart and sending out that light that we've created that is a real tangible thing. Allow that light to not only help us but to help others close to us and then out into our communities and out into the wider world where it can be utilised and can be rebalance, helping what's going on right now in the world, remembering any small thing that we can do has a ripple effect, but nothing good is ever wasted. It can be a catalyst for change. So bring your hands to your heart centre, bring yourself back to wholeness with the power of yoga, the union of mind, body, soul, and breath. Beautiful being. So we're gonna breathe in, breathe out once, do one off. 
which is the primordial sign of the universe. And then breathe in again and say Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti means peace in Sanskrit, so we'll send some peace out and that can be utilized in the world. Let's breathe in, breathe out once. Breathe in again. Oh. Breathe it in. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Let there be peace. Let there be light, having gratitude. Thank you. The Namaste. Thank you so much. Can't wait to do a, a proper class again with you in know a, in a hall somewhere. So have a really fabulous weekend. Feel free to stay online just for a little bit. I mean, you can. I'm not going to speak. If anyone wants to say hello, I've been speaking, so it can be your turn.